everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today we're nipping back to the Artful subscription box that came to us in June and if you remember a few videos ago we followed a tutorial for gouache from the magazine. We're going to do things a little bit differently today. I did want to revisit this box for a couple of reasons and the first being that I wasn't satisfied with the paper which was the Artful mixed media paper. That was the paper that they gave us in the box. I don't know what it is with subscription boxes and not giving us decent paper these days but I have remedied that and this massive whopping piece of paper here is the Arche hot pressed paper. This is quite an expensive paper. I really like it though and obviously it's quite a big format as well. This is smooth so that is the difference. The Artful mixed media paper was quite knobbly bobbly and uh, I found that the application of the paint was a bit more laborious than I would have liked so I'm interested to see how it's going to behave on a much smoother paper that still has the same absorbency and probably better absorbency actually. Uh, this is 100% pure cotton paper. Um, I shall find a link to it probably on Amazon and I'll put it down in the description if it's something that you want to check out. The reason that I've picked such expensive paper today is the painting that I want to do, I'm actually going to gift someone at Christmas time. So even if this isn't the final painting, I need to do at least a practice, but I'm hoping it'll turn out well enough. <laughs> well enough that we don't have to do a second one. So there is a purpose other than a video today for this painting so just let's keep our fingers crossed cavers that this goes well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a very light sketch. Normally when I'm painting I don't do much in the way of sketching. I tend to just like to freehand it, risk it for a biscuit. But uh, there's a few things that I just want to try out because I'm not painting directly from a reference photo today. It's more like um like a composite, you know, taking several reference photos and sort of mashing them together. So that's where uh, that's where we're at with that. All will become clear. Do not worry. Okay, the only thing that matters uh, for me to be able to see through the painting is this box. Um, this, bo this box is quite important. Um, I'm actually going to do another sketch layer once I've finished the background. You know, I'll sketch on top of the, the actual paint. But I'm going to leave this in here just now, just as a guideline. Um, just so that I say I don't lose my way entirely when I start painting. Which, uh, cause Because around the edges of this image it's going to be quite dark. As I go along, I'm going to super glue these little black bits into the lid of the the tubes because these are driving me absolutely crazy. Okay, get my super glue right now. I want to squeeze out some yellow anyway, or whatever they want to call it. I'm not quite sure in terms of mixing what I want yet, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna um squeeze squeeze out some of the orange and the red. It feels as if I've got to limber up for this this morning. <laughs> I'm going to start in this middle section here. I'm going to use exclusively Artful brushes here. So I've got this big number six round. It's quite a big piece of paper. So we are going to make a start. I do have a separate brush to mix my gouache, just as I did in the last video. And it's just this little Faber-Castell craft brush. Um, these are fairly reliable. So just with a damp brush, I'm going to give the paint a good mix in the well. So this is the yellow, first of all. I'm not mixing it with anything. I am literally just... Um, maneuvering it just to get it mobile um, because it can be quite uh, gelatinous there's a good word for you um, it can be quite gelatinous at the outset um, and you want it to be as mobile as possible. I have found that working straight off the brush, the mixing brush, that is, works really well for me as well. So the idea behind this painting is related to a very popular TV show called Stranger Things. I'm sure some of you have seen it. Uh, my friend is an absolute Stranger Things nut. When I was watching it, there was a, a set piece in particular that really struck me, like the camera angles and everything. Um, then the whole scene was just, I thought, yeah, do you know what? That would make an absolutely great painting. So that is what we're going to do here. So d without cleaning my brush, I'm going to grab a, a little, just a little lick of this um, and keep it thick like this. And I want to just mix it in in the middle here without actually mixing it, if that makes sense, you know, mixing it. There's going to be a lot of layers involved here, so, um, you know. Okay, so we're going to mix up the orange now. We're going to start mixing these together. Starting to get in kind of smoother transitions here. This doesn't have to be perfect smooth blends, that's not what I'm going for. It goes without saying at this juncture I'm having great fun as well, but you kind of knew that, didn't you? <laughs> of, course, of course you did. 
Of course you did. So I just want to get a little bit more orange. I'm just going to use up the last of what's here. At least I've not wasted any paint this time. I did feel the last time, when we did the tutorial, I felt as if I wasted a lot of paint. Um, I feel as if I've got a, a better grip on quantities, etc. this time. That makes me happy also. So the next thing is we want to bring in the red colour and this is going to be down these edges here, but we're actually going to be pushing the red into brown and then into black. So this could be quite an interesting operation, but some of this red has to sort of bleed in to the orange here as well. So we, we, you know, just in the background alone, we've got a bit of work to do here. I'm just gonna stick with this same brush. It seems to be working quite well for me. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I want to use this sort of motion here. So sort of introducing that red into, into the orange here. And I think I'm gonna have to go one side at a time. Yes, yeah, so I want to soften out these edges on the right hand side of this part here. Um, so let's grab some more orange. And again, we'll just use that to sort of blend over the top. The good thing as well about gouache, what I like about it is, as long as it's not been sitting, oh, <laughs> there's the, the black cap out of the, out of the tube. Oh, wow. Uh, even if it started to dry a little bit, I'm, I'm not talking about being absolutely bone dry, but if it's a wee bit dry and you want to go back into blend or whatever, um, you know, you've, you're you not pushed for time. You can reactivate it within reason. Obviously, that's not a thing that's going to last forever. But uh, you, you, I always feel there's less urgency with the likes of gouache than, say, compared to acrylic. Uh, I just feel you've got a little bit more time and it's not the end of the world if you don't get everything, you know, blended completely before before things dry out. So that's just a, a nice aside. It makes me comfortable. Right, so what I want to do here is I want to create a little line of black on the very outside and then I can use this black and red mixture in the middle and then I'm going to join this in with some more of the straight red on the inside part. So it's important to do that because I'm using minimal water, you know, I'm, I'm not do, taking a sort of painterly effect to this, you know, like a watercolour effect. I'm trying to keep these colours as bold as possible. See, I'm going to make like a middle stripe of this, like here. So you can see that's going to give us quite a nice transition. The same as we did with the red into the orange. It's kind of amusing how much time I'm spending on this considering it's not that important. So just make sure that those two colours there, so the black and the brown are starting to join up. I don't want the black to come in too far. I don't want it to be too harsh. So for those, those of you that are fans of Stranger Things, I think you probably know where this is going by now. I really hope that you do. If you do, you can shout out in the comments. And basically, essentially, I'm just going to do the same down the other side. Just with the dry brush here, I'm just adding in a few other bits and pieces on this side. Okay, pretty happy with that. So I'm going to let this dry completely and then I'm going to do the next layer. So this next part is going to be fairly tedious and repetitive. There are lots of web-like structures which um, close over this, this gap here. And uh, I'm just going to use my little teeny tiny detail brush, so this one here. And I'm going to put in some darker lines with the red and black mix that I had. And then I'm going to take some of the orange and a little bit of white and lighten up some of these lines in this middle part. And I'm going to do this all the way down so I could be here for some time. Okay, so I've switched up to the rigger brush here and this is to get longer, thinner strokes now that I've got a bit of a basis on this top third here. And uh, this as the name suggests, these brushes were originally designed to paint in rigging on pictures of ships. So this nice, consistent, long, thin line, you really don't need to put a lot of pressure on your brush either. And you're, you're really just letting it sweep across the, sweep across the paper. So I want to stick to using the lighter colours as much as possible um, in this middle section so that when we do our silhouette, which we are going to do in bl absolute black, I still want it to stand out. But part of the, the image here is, and part of the, the colossal point of the actual set piece in the programme is the fact that this is vast and complicated and there's things going bump in the night and behind all these sort of webbed parts. So we want to try and capture that without busying up the image too much, which is, it's just balance really. It's just about trial and error and going steady 
because we can always add. It's much more difficult to take away than it is to add. So you're better to go, go gently and you can always go back in if need be. Okay, I feel like I've got enough of an indication that, you know, these webs are coming across. I don't feel the need to continue to add in much more in that sense. So for this next part, I'm just going to pencil in the cage, which forms the main part and the main focal part of the picture. I did just heavily go over my pencil in there just so that I can see it a bit better. But I, I actually need to block out some of these shapes. One of the things that I, I wouldn't say struggle with as an artist, I think that struggle's a bit too strong a phrase, um, but one of the things that really sort of annoys me is having to, to draw regimented uh, regular shapes with things like patterns and buildings, you know, with architecture. I really struggle to keep that regimented feel and uh, obviously it's something, a structure like a like a man, we call it a man basket, but a cage where you can put people in um, is a very rigid structure and it's also going to be very regular. So that's why pencil lines are important for me here. So I've mapped out the framework of the cage here just in pencil. So I'm going to do that first. I'm just going to do this a tiny bit at a time because I need to concentrate hard on this. Jim James concentrating. So I'm going to use this little angled brush brush for this so I can get some nice straight lines and really pointy corners as well. So this type of brush is great for that or even just a, a normal flat brush. So I'm just going to squeeze out some black here. So this is going to be black because I want this to really really stand out. Let's grab a little bit of this. Again I've just used the mixing brush to get the to get the black into some sort of consistency. Get some real nice sharp edges here. Oh that wasn't as straight as I would have liked but <laughs> that's how we use an angled brush. <laughs> That was a little bit thicker than I'd hoped. Hey, James using her concentrating face. <laughs> oh dear. Right, okay. I'm gonna turn this round just so it'll put my hand in the wet paint. Okay, I feel like I want to use the rigger brush for this now. And this is for the hand railings. Okay, now, so this is the most difficult part for me and this is because I've got to put people in. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna pencil them in first just for my own sanity. Um, that feels like a good idea. So 11 is considerably shorter than Hopper for obvious reasons, if you know anything about Stranger Things. If not, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Got to make sure I get Hopper's big old head in here. Because he does have quite a big head, doesn't he? And also the fact that he's carrying a gun over his shoulder as well. Which I want to make a bit more obvious. Okay, I'm going to use the number three round for this now. And I'm going to start with Hopper and his head. One of the things I need to try and do is get this like flick of her hair in because this is it. She's got it all kind of like slicked back and it needs to not be too obvious as well. Like that. <laughs> that's far too, far too much of a flick. And then the prominent sh like 80s shoulder pads because of the jacket she's wearing. <laughs> Might have to rein that in a bit. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe a bit much. Oh dear. Anyway, so she's got, because she's got these sleeves and this blazer all rolled up as well. Get those turnips in there as well. And then she's got her sneakers. Oh, that sort of shape. Yeah, it's really showing off that ankle there because the, the trousers are, are rolled up quite high, even though she's not got high tops on. Um, it's just her socks, isn't it? I can't really remember. I don't asking you like you guys are going to be like, yeah, Jim. Okay, that's that that's fairly good. I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Oh, lordy. Right, okay. Now, no, 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 no. We're going to let this dry and we're going to add the finishing touches. Obviously the light is, the, this image is backlit here, um, but there's also lights coming from the top of the cage as well. So there's just a few other retouches that I want to pop in here and um, just bring this to life a little bit more. So now in for some of the final details, I'm going back to this brownish colour and I'm going to kind of uh, reconstitute it a little bit and I'm just using the number three round for these details. Um, again, this is just to show that there's some light reflecting off certain parts of, 
of the image. So there's going to be a fair bit of reflection here in these sort of recessed panels. And then I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of the, the orange here. Okay, so I've got some orange, which is now an ochre colour. <laughs> and I'm just going to pop a little bit of this in here. Again, with this smaller brush, I'm going to pop a little bit of this down here. So it's a very defined line here. And then I just want to spread it out a little bit. And then with a diluted brush, soften it out around this edge here. Actually covering a much bigger area. And again, the same on this side. Uh, we're not going to see as much of that because of Hopper's big head, as previously discussed. I'm going to grab a wee bit of this yellow as well now. And I just want to pop this in here. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is just take what's left of this white here and make it make it really wet. And we're going to use this for a splatter effect, but I am going to mix some yellow in with it as well. Uh, the white itself will be too stark and obviously we've got this sort of glow going on. And this is kind of like um, spores where they are and they float about in quite a lot of places um, in, in the underworld or the upside down. Um, you know, that they're always there and obviously they're CG'd in, one would imagine. Um, so it's kind of important that we include this. Even if it's just a slight tint, it doesn't have to be yellow yellow. So I'm just tapping my paintbrush. Mm, okay. I definitely want this heavier around the sides than in the middle because obviously we've got contrast around the sides. Okay. And I am going to call it quits at that. So there we go. This is uh, a much better use of the gouache in my eyes. Um, it's definitely a bit easier on smoother paper. That's, that's a, a certainty. I still feel as if it's quite reluctant to mix and it's not as mobile as some of the other brands of gouache that I've tried. It is very nice. It's very pigmented. And, I, and I've enjoyed it in that sense because um, for me it's all about opacity. But I just find it a little bit harder to work with than perhaps some of the other brands of gouache out there. If you're new to gouache, uh, this is a great place to start. It is certainly not going to do you a disservice. I am just going to uh, very gently sign the bottom of this. I don't know where my tape starts. So probably... Oh my goodness. Apparently Bob Ross always used to use a rigor brush to sign his artwork. Well seen, I haven't. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go, look. Ta-da! <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you're new to gouache, I would highly recommend, um, for sure. I just think that, for me personally, um, I'm very I'm very set in my ways. I'm very used to what I'm used to, and it's just not, not quite as mobile as I would have hoped. But overall, good fun. Quite happy with how my pictures turned out, truthfully, and I really hope that my friend likes it. Uh, see, I'm going to keep this for her for a Christmas present, and then after that, I'll send her back to watch the video. I know she doesn't watch all, most of my YouTube videos, so I'm I'm quite safe doing this now. Um, it's not going to spoil the surprise for her. <laughs> now that I've gone and said that, wait and see. But this this video will come out. She'll be like, um, <laughs> what are you doing? I'll try and take this off gently. I really wanted a thick border as well to give that uh, that extra sort of impact of these darker edges and that's kind of worked in my favour as well. I'm quite pleased with that. So there we go. That is my finished piece. I'm quite pleased with it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and whether this has changed your mind about the gouache from the last video, from the tutorial video, or whether you're still convinced that uh, your opinion is more concrete than ever. I've actually had really good fun with this today. This has kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone a little bit, um, but in a really nice way. And I've enjoyed using the Artful brushes as always. So that is it for today, guys. I want to thank you very much for watching. All of your comments are welcome down underneath the video. Please stay safe, take care of each other, and I will see you back in the cave for another video. So have a great day, everyone, and bye-bye for now.